So let's continue that with the class. Last time we were talking about PPP over the long term. So we talked about the relative PPP, which really is inflation, what we're talking about. So we finished with this graph. So low. We said that the low inflation countries, their currency is getting stronger over the long term. And the high inflation countries are getting currency is getting weaker. We saw this graph. You can draw a line. So we said we can do this calculation. You saw this calculation in the exam. So again, it's the same as the interest rate, but we're just using inflation instead of the interest rate. So then, try to do this calculation to practice. So this is the spot rate for the British pounds. Expected inflation in the US, 2%. Expected inflation in the UK, 3%. Okay. So this time you need to calculate two years, two years later what's going to be the exchange rate. So you have this one to the power of n. Just two to the power squared. So use this equation. It's the same as the other equation for the inflation instead of interest rate. And solve the solve problem. So which currency will get stronger? US dollar will get stronger. It has lower inflation, that's correct. So is this number going to get higher or lower? So uh, the number will get lower, right? The US dollar gets stronger. So it's going to be about 1% a year lower, about 2% lower. It's going to be close to 178. So let's check and see. Calculation. So we are going to have 1.8 multiplied by 
0 0.02 squared, 1.03 squared. 1.8 multiplied by 1.04, 1.06. Okay. 1.7653. Does that sound correct? Yes, right? It's slightly lower than the, the other number. So we're going to skip this one. This one is European terms. Okay. You can do this yourself if you want to practice. It's similar. This time it's the Japanese yen. Which, which one will get stronger? The yen or the dollar? Yeah, inflation is lower. Okay. So what's going to happen to this number? The yen is getting stronger. Get higher or get lower? Get lower, right? So it's going to be around 108, that kind of thing, right? So we can see 108.84. So there, there have been many researchers who have tested about PPP. Do you want to be a researcher? Do you want to do a PhD degree and do some research about that? You can research about the effect of inflation on exchange rates, right? It's great to be young. You can choose to do anything, right? If you want, you can do a PhD and study the effect of inflation on exchange rates. Right? Or you can choose something else. So anyway, a lot of people have done that kind of research already. The first one they did is absolute PPP. So absolute PPP, we said that one US dollar is 1,101. But it should be 900. Okay? Therefore, the one is overvalued or undervalued. The one, undervalued or overvalued? Undervalued, okay? So, if we use the absolute PPP, we would say that they should get closer, okay? So that the prices are the same in the two countries. This is the exchange rate which the prices are the same in the two countries, okay? So this should slowly over time get closer to here. But they looked at that, they studied that in the history, and like we saw with Japan and Korea, Korea has been undervalued against the Japanese yen for 30 years, right? Yes. Undervalued against the US dollar for 30 years. So this one doesn't work, okay? This doesn't work. We can't say that the, yen, the Korean one is undervalued, so it's going to get closer to the dollar. Okay, we could be waiting for 30 years, and the Korean one would still be undervalued against the dollar. Okay? Why? There are some different reasons. So prices of similar goods do not seem to equalize between countries. Okay? Do you understand equalize? Yes. We already looked at some things, right? We have transportation, we have tariffs, taxes, we have culture. Different cultures in different countries. We have uh, preference of the country to support their exports, that kind of thing. However, the relative PPP is, yes, over the long period, there is a relationship. Relative PPP, what's another word for relative PPP? Begins with I, ends with N. Inflation. Inflation, yes. I didn't need to say what was in the middle. It's fine. You got it, right? So inflation, relative PPP, is the change in price in one country compared to the change in price in another country. That's inflation. We remember this graph. So inflation, yes. Absolute PPP, not sure. So then the next question is, is inflation useful for short time periods? What do you think? Can we predict the exchange rate with inflation over the short term? No, why not? So we have these studies which examine the short term relationship and they show that the exchange rates can move against the, the PPP rate, right? 
So very often, even though one country has higher inflation, their currency is getting weaker instead of stronger. Or sorry, it's getting stronger instead of weaker, right? It's going the opposite way. So why is that? So we already explained about carry trade, okay? Carry trade makes a move in the opposite direction. Safe haven effect. So in Switzerland, people want to buy the Swiss franc. Government intervention. Dirty float. Dirty float is your currency is floating, but you're intervening. The central bank is intervening. So here we can see the euro and the US dollar. So here is 1917 and here is 2010. What do you think the red line is? Market rate or PPP rate? Market rate. Right? Market rate changed a lot more than change in inflation, right? Blue line is the PPP rate. So in 1970, one euro was 0 0.8 US dollars. Okay? In 2010, one euro is 120 US dollars. Which currency got stronger? Euro is on the left. So the line is going up. So which currency got stronger? Euro, Euro got stronger, okay? So where, which country was inflation higher? The Euro or the US? US. US. US had higher inflation. Prices were going up more quickly, okay? Now we can see that over the long term, the market rate is following the PPP rate, right? This came back down again to 120 here nowadays, okay? So we can predict over the long term. We, can we predict the exchange rate? Yes, it follows inflation, okay? But what about the short term? Can we use inflation to predict the exchange rate? No. no. Right? Here we said that, oh, inflation in the US is higher, so the US dollar should get weaker. Okay, but what happened? The US dollar got a lot stronger just in one year. Then suddenly got weaker. Okay, and then here stronger, weaker. So in the, in the short term, it doesn't work well, but it works over the long term. Okay, so we have different reasons why the exchange rate moves in the short term. There is the Canadian dollar and the US dollar, a little bit more, less volatile relationship in the market. Here is, here is the graph of the quarterly inflation. Quarterly data is three months of the different countries. So we can see there's no real line we can draw here. There are some countries is here, some is here, some is here, some is here. Okay. On this graph, we could see the relationship. Okay. There's nobody here. Okay. There's nobody here. They're all on this line. But in the short term, if we put the inflation here, we can't see any relationship. So we have some historical data which says that we can have the relative PPP inflation works over the long period of time. So we should try to estimate the future rate of inflation. If we can estimate the future rate of inflation, we should be able to estimate the exchange rate in five years or ten years later. Okay? So how can discuss with your partner? How can we estimate future rate of inflation?
What's wrong? Oh no. Che Yun Sun. Kim Wei Min. Who do you think can tell us, about, or where can we find the information about future inflation? Where is inflation going to be higher in the future? In Japan or in Zimbabwe? In Zimbabwe. In Zimbabwe, but how do you know that? Where can you get that information? Past data. Looking at the past data, right? Anything else? Current economic system of the country. Yes, look at the economy, government, those kind of things. Is there anybody who can do that for us and we can just listen to their idea of inflation? Mm -hmm. Famous economists, the IMF, central banks, they all do that kind of research. Okay? So we can use the historical data. People do that. Combine the historical data, government with de government deficits, economic growth, monetary policy. Use the independent forecast. Do you understand forecast? Yes. So we can go to the central bank websites. We can go to the Economist. Bank of International Settlements has a list of all the central banks. Central banks have a lot of people working there. What are they doing every day? In the central bank. Say if there are 1,000 people working in the Korean central bank, what are they doing? Just playing the card game on the computer? <laughs> waiting for 5 o'clock? <laughs> They're all working in the money printer? <laughs> Printing the money? Sometimes. Mm -hmm. What else are they doing? Hmm? Research. Research. Most of the time they're doing research. So we can use their, their data. Okay? So here's a list of all of the central banks. Alright, so we have Bank of Korea. Bank of Korea, monetary policy, right? Inflation targeting. So they have some group of people who make the money, decide the monetary policy, okay? But those people depend on the research, research that the workers do. The workers do the research and then they give it to the, usually the committee. Do you understand committee? And then the committee decides, we'll raise the interest rate, we'll lower the interest rate, we'll do some QE or not. Okay, so research is an important part of their job, and they, they will uh, provide their guess or estimate for inflation also in their research. Okay. So if you work for a central bank, if you want to work for a central bank, then maybe you need to do a PhD degree. Because in the PhD degree you learn how to do, what do you learn how to do in a PhD degree? <coughs> Banana farming? <laughs> what do you learn how to do in a PhD degree? Research. Right, that's the main point of a PhD degree. You learn how to do research. Okay? So then you can go and work in the central bank. And you can make the inflation data. Right? IMF also has inflation data. Also the 10-year bond. If we look at the 10-year bond price per country, that tells us the market idea of inflation. If people expect a lot of inflation, the 10-year government bond will be more, interest rate will be higher. If they don't expect much inflation, the interest rate will be lower. Okay? So we'll talk about that a little bit more in a minute. So we're going to talk about uh, Fisher. So. We have these two main forecasting models. We have purchasing power parity. Inflation is the main determinant of spot exchange rates. And then we had the, this is the Fisher effect. We explained that the two, the interest rates, the banks use the interest rates to decide the 
exchange rate. So we're going to discuss about this more. The first time we discussed about this, we, we said that people shouldn't be able to make a, a profit by trading the currencies and making a forward contract. Okay? But now we're going to look at a different explanation for the, the interest rates, which is more linked to the PPP. So in this effect, we use the interest rates rather than inflation to explain why the change rates, exchange rates change. Okay? So this is a model which is attributed to this guy, Irvine Fishing, Fisher from the US. He did a PhD in Yale, so he was good at research. Okay. So <clears throat> for, if we're going to look at a risk-free bond, what is a risk-free bond? U.S. government bond, right? So we can go online and find out the price of a U.S. government bond. What bond do we usually look at for the U.S.? What time limit is the most common one? How many years bond is the most common one? Ten years, right? <coughs> So here is the government bonds in the US. We can see 10 year. Uh, do you understand this? Here we have coupon. Coupon means every year I will get 2%. Okay? Deposited into the bank account. Then price. Price means how much am I paying? Here we can see we're paying slightly less than the bond price. Right? 100% would be the same. This is less, it's 99.7. Okay, and then we have the yield. So if the price is lower, then the yield is going to be higher than the coupon. Okay, because I have to add on something extra. So if I pay $9 today, and then I get back $10 next year, right? Then that's an extra 10% that I need to add. Okay? Say I have a coupon of 2%. So I'm going to get back $10 plus 2%. That would be $10.20 okay? at the end of the year. Right? That's the coupon. I get that anyway. And then I have to decide the price. How much am I going to pay for this bond? If the price is lower than 10, then this, this is going to be a higher yield. Okay? I get back more. It's, the yield is going to be not 2%, uh, it's going to be 12% in this case. But sometimes we have, do you understand yield? Yield means how much did I make on the bond. Okay, so I made, I put in 9 and I got back 10.20 and I made 12% yield. Okay, so it's, that's why they don't say interest rate, because this could be more like interest, and this could be like interest. So they use different system called this one coupon and this one yield. Okay, but this is the one we're talking about, important one. This is not important. Okay, this is the important one we can refer to as interest rate, the yield. So here we can see the yield, the important one, 2.03%. Okay, so what do investors expect inflation to be in the U.S.? We need to go down here and look at the Treasury Inflation Protected Securities. This will tell us our real interest rate. So, do you understand inflation protected? So, the problem is that we're going to have inflation. So, we get a yield of 2% a year. Okay? If inflation is 4% a year, would that make sense? No. No, unless there was a world crisis and the U.S. is being used as a safe haven. If inflation is 4% and we're getting 2% every year, it doesn't make sense. Okay? So this is an inflation-protected security. So let's look at the 10-year. And we just look at the yield is important. The yield is 0.57% on the 10-year. Okay? So the other one was 2.03%. This is minus inflation bond. Okay? This is including inflation bond. 
So could you tell me what is the market's estimate of inflation in the US? Including inflation, minus inflation. What is the what do markets think inflation will be in the US? Average every year for the next ten years. This is a ten year bond price, including inflation, two point zero three percent. This is a 10-year bond which the government will pay me the inflation. So whatever inflation is, the government will pay me at the end of the year. Okay? And then they will pay me this much extra on top of that. So what do markets expect inflation to be? 1.46%. Okay? Do you understand? Yes. So this is what markets think inflation will be. Because in this bond we have two things. We have inflation and we have this. What is this? We talked about the time value of money. This is real interest rate. Okay? So this means that there's no risk in this bond. I'm sure I can get the money back. Okay? There is no inflation. If inflation is 10%, the government will pay me 10%. Okay? So no inflation. It's protected against inflation. But I still want more money back next year. Okay? So that's what Fisher, this is what Fisher found out. Okay? That was what Fisher did his research on and found out. Why do we have this? So he says this is the real interest rate. Okay? And this reflects the reward that should accrue to a lender for lending to a productive economy. Okay? So uh, this is the 0 0.57. Okay, so it's because I could use my money now for something else. So I prefer to use my money now than next year. Okay, like if I give you an apple, apple doesn't have inflation or risk. So I give you an apple next year, but you prefer to eat the apple now. Okay, and we have inflation. So these two, these are the two things which make up a default free bond. Inflation 1.46 plus interest rate. Okay, this is inflation minus inflation, only real interest rate. This is real interest rate and inflation. Okay, this is the normal one. He's talking about default pre Okay, one real interest rate and two inflation. So we have real interest rate plus inflation is equals to the market interest rate on a default free bond. So he says here interest rate instead of yield. So this real interest rate is much easier to conceptualize than it is to measure. Conceptualize means think about. Okay? It's probably related to economic growth theory. Okay? So it's not it's hard to measure exactly. But in the time of high economic growth, do you think real interest rate is higher or lower? The economy is going very well, there is very high economic growth. Do people want to use their money now or next year? Yeah. Hmm? The economy is going very well, everything is growing. If you invest in a business, you can make a big profit. Do you want to use your money now or next year? Yes. Everybody now except him next year? Why next year? Maybe next year there could be a recession. Things are going well now. You want to wait until next year to use your money? But the economy is still growth well and I have many um, I have more money in my pocket. So I want to invest invest a pot or bond and I want to yeah, so you want to use your money now to invest in the bond or the fund, right? Uh, and if uh, there is high inflation, mm. you have to spend your money now because after time they yes, okay. We don't have a okay, so that's a separate issue. That's inflation, right? But we're just talking about the real interest rate at the moment. Okay, mm -hmm. so most people are going to want to spend their money now. Can you understand that? Yeah. Okay. 
economic growth is very high, economy is going very well. Are you going to start a new restaurant now or next year? No. no. You're going to wait till next year to start your restaurant? <laughs> no? Okay, you're going to do now. So when we have a high economic growth, is the real interest rate going to be higher or lower? Are people going to be more patient or less patient? Less patient. So is this, are they going to have a higher or lower real interest rate? Higher, right? Real interest rate is related to patience. I'm very patient. I don't care whether I get the apple this year or next year. Zero. Doesn't matter. Okay? If I really want to have the apple now, then you have to give me some high real interest rate. Okay? To make me delay until next year. So it's the same. If the economy is going very well, you have to pay me a high real interest rate to make me delay my spending. Okay? Do you understand that idea? So it's hard to measure, but it's linked to economic growth. If we think about economy is going badly, the real interest rate will be lower. Okay? Economy is going well, real interest rate will be higher. But real interest rate doesn't change as much as inflation. So here we can see, the, for example, changes in GDP. This is recession, growth, recession, growth. So as the economy changes, the real interest rate can also change. So the real interest rate is more stable than inflation. Inflation changes more than the real interest rate. Okay? Changes in the real rate occur slowly in response to technological changes, population growth, population skills, changes in capital stock. So if we have some new technological if we have some new technological development, will the real interest rate get higher or lower? What do you think? Microsoft is invented in 1995. Is the real interest rate going to get higher or lower? Higher, right? And Microsoft was invented, so I think, oh, I can sell Microsoft Office in Africa. Right? Or I can go to Asia and sell Microsoft Office. I need to use my money now. A lot of opportunities, okay? So I don't want to invest in bonds and wait to get my money in 10 years. I want to use it now. So if you want me to invest in bonds, you need to pay a higher real interest rate. Inflationary expectations, expectations can be changed a lot over a short period of time. In Russia, does the inflation change quickly? Yes. What was inflation last year? And what is it now? 15%. Okay. So here we can see this is uh, the US inflation. So we can see that the inflation is changing in the US. Okay. So 1965, 2011. Okay. One year inflation goes up to 12%, down to 5%, up to 15%. Okay. Nowadays, they don't have any problem with inflation, okay, very low, but it can change. So inflation <coughs> may not be as stable as the uh, interest rate, okay? So this is the UK. We can see here that the interest rate is following inflation. Here is the inflation, the red line in the UK, and here is the interest rate, the blue line. Okay, so high inflation, high interest rate. Okay, low inflation, low interest rate. Here we have the crisis. So the UK put the interest rate to zero, like other countries. Are you okay? Hmm? What's wrong? Hmm? Is there an insect or something? Oh yes. Hmm? What is this? A bee? I don't know, is it scary? <laughs> Why don't you come to the rescue? Be a hero. <laughs> <laughs> You're sitting there. You can save them. <laughs> oh? 
It's your chance to be a hero. <laughs> Do you want to move to a different desk? <laughs> Give me a move to a different desk. It's your hand. You do one very well. You can do it. You can do it. You can do it. So here we can see in Canada, again, interest rates and inflation, we can see the relationship. Uh, CPI, inflation, here is the, the, the square line is interest rate. Okay, so the interest rate trying to follow the inflation. What is the T-bill? T-bill is the short term, short term one, three months. Bills, bonds is used for one year or more. Bills is used for less than one year. Okay. So <clears throat> the Fisher model assumes that this real interest rate requirement is the same across major indu industrial countries. So I can invest in any country in the world. So the real interest rate should be the same. Okay. The difference should be inflation. That will be the difference. Okay. If I, if I invest in a risk-free bond, like Germany or the US, both of them are risk-free. The real interest rate should be the same, just inflation is the difference. Okay? So, uh, so the, any interest rate difference between the countries is cause of inflation. So the United States say their interest rate is 5% and the United Kingdom interest rate is 7%, then what? What would you say? Why is the UK interest rate 7% and the US interest rate 5%? Why is, there, why is the UK higher than the US? How much higher is inflation in the UK? 2%, right? So the expected inflation over the next 12 months must be 2% higher in the UK compared to the US. So this is the international fissure effect, okay? It says that changes in the spot exchange rates are related to differences in the market interest rates. And the reason is Differences in interest rates capture differences in inflation. So that's the main point. This center is here. Do you understand capture? What does capture mean? You have to capture the insect, right? <laughs> so uh, we have the difference in inflation, and the difference in interest rate is following the difference in inflation. Okay, we explain with the bonds here. Okay, difference in interest rate is equal to difference in inflation. The interest rate follows inflation. Okay? That's the international Fisher effect. Okay? Inflation is assumed to be the main determinant of future exchange rates. So if the difference in interest rates is equal to the difference in inflation, okay, then we can use the interest rate to predict the future exchange rate. So that's a, looking at the it's inter interest rate parity from another side, okay? First side we looked at, you shouldn't be able to make a profit by using the forward contract. You shouldn't be able to make a profit, okay? Second side we're looking at, exchange rate depends on inflation over the long term. Difference in interest rate is equal to difference in inflation. So we can use the interest rate, okay? So that's two explanations why we can use the difference in interest rate to predict the uh, exchange rate change in the future. So discuss with your partner. What is the international Fisher effect?
The difference in inflation is the same as the difference in the interest rate. Yes. So, uh, so, what do we use that for? In case of when we invest in the forecast interest, we, we get the we topic. What do we forecast using the difference in interest rates? Mm -hmm. Price of bananas? <laughs> Exchange rate, okay? So we, we use the difference in the interest rates to predict the exchange rate because it's equal to the difference in inflation. And inflation, we already saw inflation over the long term is the best predictor of exchange rates. Okay, will this model work well in the short term? No, maybe not. But it will work well in the long term, right? Then why do banks do that? If this if the, could be very wrong in the short term, why do banks make that kind of contract, forward contract? So for example, I, the bank makes a forward contract based on the interest rate. So interest rate in US is 2%. UK is 3%. Okay, I change $1 million. Okay, to pounds. The exchange rate is one pound is equal to one, let's say two dollars to make it easy, right? So if I change one million pounds, one million dollars to pounds today, how many pounds will I get? Five hundred. Okay, then how many will I get next year? Which is going to get what's going to happen to the exchange rate, right? We're going to have one pound is equal to... What's happening here? The pound is higher interest rate, so is the pound going to get weaker? Yes, we get weaker by 1%, let's say. So it's going to be more, more dollars or less dollars? The pound is getting weaker. Less dollars, let's say it's 199, okay? So the bank makes this contract, so I get a forward contract, $1 million is going to be equal to more than 500 or less than 500 pounds. The dollar got stronger. More. Dollar gets stronger, I can get more pounds at the end of the year, right? So 1% more, 505 pounds, okay? The bank makes this contract, this is locked in. I'm sure I'm going to get 505 pounds at the end of the year, okay? But what happens? The pound suddenly gets a lot weaker, okay? So at the end of the year, $1 million is actually equal to 400 pounds, okay? But the bank made this contract. So the bank has to give me 505 pounds instead of 400 pounds. Is the bank happy? If they didn't make the contract, they would have exchanged at this rate. Okay, so why does the bank make this contract? Doesn't it seem risky? We said that this will work over the long term, but not in the short term. Might not work. The bank can, what do you think? How can the bank make that contract? Why doesn't the bank go bankrupt? By taking on all of the risk instead of the company. Yes. All right, they made the opposite contract with another customer, okay? They have another customer who's changing 
not dollars to pounds, they're changing pounds to dollars. Okay? So they made the same one, so when we make the forward contract, we're not going to lose any money. It's going to be a little bit of profit for us, because our buying and selling price is different. Okay? So they balance out between the two currencies. Okay? And then also the bank, over the long term, this should come back, and the bank shouldn't, uh, it should balance out a little bit. If the bank has enough money to survive over the long term, it should balance out over time. Okay? But the main, the main point is they, they have the opposite transaction from another customer. Okay? So really the bank is, you could think of it as a matching of customers okay? who want to change the currencies. So then, uh, do you have any question about what we studied today? In this case, big, the big bank is very useful to contract. Yes, there are the big global banks who can make forward contracts. So it's, it's, it's better to be a big bank, right, to make that kind of contract. You've got more customers and you can balance more. Okay, so then uh, let's finish there for today.